Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. If they're not open, that's a promise that's broken. So it's a real inconvenience for rural communities. More mail issues in the Red River Valley after a man says he had some problems with the U.S. Postal Service. We have heard several complaints in the past, mostly in the metro area. But this happened in a rural community. And that's why Joshua Lemke called our whistleblower hotline to share his story. Valley News Team's Melanie Palmer has the details. It's been really frustrating due to uh, lack of service. Joshua Lemke has been living in Hendrum for a couple years now. And he tells us he was surprised when he stopped at the Hendrum post office last week to mail something important. We're trying to mail out a certified letter from my mother and uh, we weren't able to mail it out till two days later because the post office was closed. There's a sign on the door saying when they're open. That's why Lemke made a point to be there on time. But he says when he got there, they were closed. They weren't open the next day due to staffing issues apparently. We stopped in the post office and talked with an employee working there. She tells us she's just working there temporarily and her postmaster is trying to find someone permanent. Belemke says his beef isn't with the local office. It's with the way the postal service is run. They need to plan better. They obviously didn't plan well for when they moved our current employees somewhere else. Lynette has lived in Hendrum for 18 years, and she tells us she thinks the post office does just fine. The lobby is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can go in and you can get your mail whenever you want. We talked with spokesperson from USPS, David Rupert. He tells us the hours of operation for all post offices across the country depend on the number of people they serve. Rupert also says Lemke is right. The PO did open an hour later that day, but he says there was a good reason for it, staffing problems. And Rupert tells us when situations like this do happen, they try to make the public aware. In Hendrum, Melanie Palmer, Valley News Live. The Postal Service spokesperson goes on to tell us that there are several other offices within 15 miles, and he wants to remind people about the online delivery options with USPS. He tells us they're always looking for more employees. For a link to online delivery options and location of postal services near you, head to our website at valleynewslive.com. As mentioned, this story came to us through our whistleblower hotline. So if you need help with a serious issue in your community, call the phone number on your screen, 701-237-6576, and leave your tip. We'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. A Minnesota man is facing three felony charges after prosecutors say he did some disgusting things to a six-year-old boy in a war room bathroom. 18-year-old Dalton Kieser is facing three charges of criminal sexual conduct. Court documents state that on Thursday, a mother was waiting for her son to come out of the men's bathroom at the War Road campground. She said when he came out, he was emotionally upset and told his mom that a man did disgusting things inside. Court records state Kieser forced the boy to perform oral sex on him and then did the same to the child. Police uh, say they pulled surveillance video that shows Kieser standing outside the bathroom and then going in after the boy. Kieser fled the scene on a bicycle but was later arrested by War Road Police. Pretty quiet out there, which is okay for most everyone, including everyone in our storm team. Hutch, nice again tonight? It's very nice. We do have one renegade thunder shower in south central parts of North Dakota. Otherwise, clear and extremely beautiful. Temperatures in the 70s out east near Bemidji. Low 80s in the Red River Valley of the heat remains out in eastern Montana and central South Dakota. For this evening, we'll cool through the 70s. Light wind and crystal clear skies continue in Fargo and Grand Forks. Looks like another very quiet night. Now, Wednesday, we have a few hitches in the giddy up to talk about a chance of thunder for some. I'll have details in your hour by hour forecast in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Hutch. Mm -hmm. Now's a good time to make sure you can get the forecast whenever you need it with the latest version of the Valley News Live Storm Team weather app. You'll get your forecast as well as weather alerts on on the go to help you plan your day and keep your family safe. Download the latest version for free so you don't miss important alerts. Just search VNL Weather in your app store. 
A deadly tornado that recently struck a western North Dakota city has prompted state and local officials to call for increased safety standards for RV parks that often house oil field workers and families. McKenzie County leaders expect to meet with state officials this week to talk about how to limit the number of people living in recreational vehicles and how to make trailer parks safer. An EF2 classification tornado ripped through the Prairie View RV park in Watford City last week, killing a newborn baby and injuring more than two dozen people. The tornado destroyed at least 120 structures, including RVs that served as temporary housing. The county planning and zoning director says that it takes a tragedy like this to open our eyes. Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton continues his tour of areas in the state hit hard by severe weather. This is what's left of Highway 23 along uh, Carleton County following a recent storm. Pieces of roadway cracked and broken apart as floods made it in completely impassable. Crews began working to fix the highway, but it came at a cost of more than a million dollars. The governor issued a state disaster declaration last week to provide funding. However, he still hopes they can also receive federal assistance. We're here to say the state of Minnesota is here to help. This is not political. It's not partisan. This is a Minnesota response. We're proud of what the state to uh, legislature we have put together to have a capability to respond to help uh, you know, communities in situations like this and we'll bring that to play uh, as the next uh, days weeks unfold. Emergency management along with government leaders plan to meet with FEMA on Thursday. There they will present their damage report data to the organization. Cash and jewelry seized from a Jamaican man accused of masterminding a large lottery scam with victims in North Dakota and other states will be liquidated and the proceeds doled out to victims under a federal judge's order, a step toward getting at least some restitution for those people. The property was seized from Laverick Willocks when he was arrested in the Caribbean country in November of 2016. It includes the equivalent of nearly $12,000, that's U.S. dollars, and jewelry of unknown worth including gold chains, gold rings, gold and silver bracelets, including one with a diamond, and Rolex watches. Authorities say at least 90 mostly elderly Americans lost a total of more than $5.7 million to the scam operated out of a Kingston, Jamaica mansion where Willux lived with his mother. The case that resulted is believed to be the first large-scale Jamaican lottery scam tried in U.S. courts with federal conspiracy, fraud and money laundering charges filed against 27 people. There's a major traffic headache surrounding Interstate 94 and University Drive. Construction on University has forced the closure of more lanes. It's causing backups like this one today near the University exit during rush hour. The lane reduction will allow crews to remove a portion of the inside driving lane to pave the new northbound driving lanes north of the westbound off-ramp. That work is expected to be completed in a week to 10 days. Cheyenne Street in West Fargo is open again after being shut down most of the day. The major north-south artery is undergoing a complete rebuild. And today it had to be closed to traffic so crews could begin paving a part of the project. The new segment stretches from near I-94 north to 17th Avenue. And this is probably not the last time Cheyenne is uh, going to have to be shut down. The total project is expected to take two years. An electrical issue is believed to have started a fire that destroyed a truck this morning. It happened at a home near Cragness, Minnesota. At one point, the truck was fully engulfed in flames. Crews put out the blaze in about a half an hour. No one was injured and damage was limited to that truck. Later on Valley News Live at 6, a difficult challenge for all involved. What happened that uh, led to the death of that bear in Grand Forks? Up next, a simple switch can keep your child from falling victim to a washing machine danger.